Hey, and welcome back to another twin motion video. In this video, we're going to look at phasing. We actually already have looked at phasing, but we're going to look at phasing in presenter mode. That's really cool. So that's new within twin motion 2021. That's something I want to stress because this did not exist two weeks ago, three weeks ago. It did not exist. So now we have phasing, which we're used to having, and we're used to the presenter, but with 2021, we have an upgraded presenter, but not only is it just upgraded aesthetically, but I can use, we can use the phasing that we've created outside of the presenter within the presenter. And that's really important because of all that presenter allows you to do. So before we get into it, if at any point during this video, you happen to learn something, which my gosh, I hope you do, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Okay, here we go. So this is what we're used to, obviously a brand new Twin Motion model. Here we go. In Twin Motion 21, we now have this icon up here, which is for presenter. And it's a quick access button to presenter, which is awesome because we're immediately here. Of course, we went through this in a previous video. I have all these different options that I can look through to use for presenter now. It's all built in here. This is what we're used to seeing outside of presenter, but now within presenter in a more compact way. And so we, you know, you might ask, how do we use phasing here? Well, I'm in fact in a scene that has nothing in it, clearly nothing, it's a brand new scene. And we don't have any sort of phasing. So nothing is here, nothing's prompting me. And the reason I know this is because not only is it a brand new scene, but I have nothing in it besides the starting ground. And if I come here to phasing, I have no phasing. So let's fix this. I actually am going to go to a previous project that I've done that includes phasing and that it will then have phasing. So I'm not gonna spend time spend your time going through what phasing is, how it works, and all of this, how to set it up, because I spent a long time doing that in a previous video that I'm going to link to now in the cards, so please check that out. That's really helpful, and that will basically get you to the point where we are now. And so in this model, let's go to phasing, because I clearly have set something up here, and here we go. I have phasing, and for the sake of this, I'm going to call this phase phasing one. I just want to make sure this is not just called phasing and you'll see why here. So I have phasing one. If I click on this, we can see here's all of our phasing and not to go into phasing, but it's based on time and, you know, literally phasing throughout time. And so if, as I change the time, we can see that more portions of my building are then built until I get to walls and roof. And, you know, there's a lot that we can do here. And so this is called, this is all cool. There's a lot that we can work with. And so this is phasing. And so we're used to seeing this, of course, this is nothing new, but what is new is the fact that we can use this and access this really within presenter mode. So like, it's very simple because we saw in the last project where I had nothing, we couldn't use phasing because there was no phasing. So if I go to presenter up here, again, the top right, I'll click on that and I'm in phasing. Well, no, I'm not in phasing. I'm in the presenter mode and we want to look at the phasing. So we've got, of course, our all the different options where we can normally use the scene. But if you look, notice down here, we have this bar. And as I hover over the bar, I can see this particular date that pops up. And this date happens to be that very start date for the beginning of my phasing. And that's great. So if I just drag this, my guess is the date, yes, will move. And then as the date moves, I will start to see the phasing populate. And as this phasing pop, this phasing will populate based on literally the phasing I set up. As I get to that new date that takes me to the next phase, then everything else in that phase is then populated. So really great stuff, really cool. And so maybe you have multiple phases or maybe you have a, a phase that's showing a building here and you have another phase that's showing a building somewhere else. Well, that's where these options come into play. I actually can click on this button and I can choose between the phase. So right now I have active phasing is set to phasing one. And so I, you can see why I renamed that to phasing one. I want to make sure I have that not just called phasing. So you think it's called phasing and that's it. So this is a bit different. So maybe for some reason you decide, well, you know, we're at this point in the project. So I need to, you know, November 30th is a great place to start. Okay, well, then I can come over here and I can just decide, well, you know, I'm just going to start in November 30th and I'm not even going to have access down here at least to begin sooner than that. So the model will always look like this. So here my beginning now is November 30th. And of course, I can continue to drag this and I get everything else that's populated within the presenter. But I then... I can even constrain this from the other end if I want to decide, you know, well, the project should be done sooner than that. Or maybe I'm just discluding the furniture because the furniture begins at a certain point. And so I can drag this back. Okay. And so that's then compressed here in the middle. And so I can see, you know, 
I, I don't even get all the furniture. I get some of it. So cool. So we have a lot of flexibility here. Now, if we want to revert all this, I can drag it back or I can press this, this revert button, which doesn't tell me it's revert, but it is revert because I, when I click it, everything goes back to normal. So that's kind of cool. That seems pretty simple. I can even click these arrows left and right to go day by day, which is pretty exciting and easy to do. And so this, I can also see this useful if you're, if you're giving a presentation and maybe construction has started and you're trying to not only reintroduce the project to the, the client to the project, but maybe you're trying, maybe you've added something else. And so of course, maybe you're now into the middle of December and the project is, it's there. Like you've already passed everything else. And so you're just at this point. So it makes sense that you might as well start there and then continue on. So th there's a lot of versatility that we have with this. And of course, if, like I said, if we add another phase, another phasing, sorry. So I'll just go over here and I'll call this phasing two. Well, there it is. It's called phasing two. I can quit media mode. I can do whatever I want. And then come over here and now I haven't set up phasing two to do anything, but I now have phasing one and phasing two that I can choose from. So that's really great. And I, of course I can only choose one of these to look at at a time, but you know, that's nice. I mean, this is obviously very, this is all the same. I haven't changed phasing two at all, but we don't even have to go into phasing at all to look at phasing. Now, once you've set it up, of course you'll have to, but after that you can view phases and work with them and not only do that, but just change the dates and everything right here within the presenter, which is fantastic because of course it's great for presenting, not just to clients, but to yourself. This I'd rather look at a view like this rather than, you know, the entire, uh, the entire interface along with, the phasing itself. So this is a pretty simple video. It's more or less showing you that you now have access to phasing within the presenter and a little more of what we can do with phasing inside the presenter. And so, like I said, if you have not checked out how to use the phasing itself, because of course you need to know how to do that before you can use it and implement that and put it into presenter and really use it there, then please go check out that video. I really, but that will do it. I mean, it is pretty simple. I'm so happy for something like this. It is something so simple, something so easy, but something so satisfying. It looks great. And having this versatility within Presenter is great. I can, What I can see in the future is that we have a lot more that's kind of built into Presenter that we can toggle on and off, that we could access, that we can control within Presenter so we can give a more active, a more living presentation as opposed to just this static scene. Now, of course, my next goal is to try to get some sort of animations to not only work within presenter because obviously they do work, but like have a little more control over them. And so my hope is that maybe phasing can do something with that. Uh, we're going to save that for another video because that's going to be quite the task when it comes to adding animations into phasing and then <laughs> trying to manipulate them with this new presenter interface using phasing. So please look for that one in the near future. That will be coming out for sure because I'm curious what we can do with that. So that will do it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, please, please, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also, I really hope to see you in the, the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you for watching.